Hey folks, so this week Mario's visiting in town, and if you've been following my channel for a little while, Mario's done a couple collaborations with me on a bunch of different types of fish. He's visiting his son, and we're going to jump on a charter boat tomorrow, hopefully target a couple different types of fish, and after that we'll probably do what he does best, cook him up either on the grill, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we're going to get started at sunrise and hopefully have a pretty good day on the water. I think it's his first time fishing in North Carolina, so we'll run the beach and kind of just see what happens and wing it. Hopefully we'll have a pretty good day and uh, we'll fill in all the details as we go. There you go. King, what's that? That's a king. I don't think that's a spatter. Yeah, yeah hang on. Well, we had a line in the water for about, I don't know. 17 seconds. <laughs> I think we got our first king mackerel. That's great. Take a time, Kip. Nice king. Nice king. Yeah, just get him up top. He's gonna take more drag. There you go. Get him up top. Pull the rod, Kip. Alright, here's the first king of the day. There we go. Got him in the eye. That's it. I'm the snagging king. Yeah. He hit it the first time and then it came back a second time. Okay. That was pretty pretty cool. Came that back rod at 2500. That was quick. That rod wasn't in the water for what? Oh, that maybe 2500. I was trying to be good. Here you go. Here you go. Spanish. Yeah. Hey, oh. Spaniard. Damn. Pretty beautiful fish, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forget to feed her on the end of that. Spaniard. How many more you want to keep? I'm good. I don't need any. Yeah, we don't need any more. Alright. It's a nicer one. Sure. Today we're fishing with Captain Rennie Clark, uh, Tournament Trail Charters. We're doing some light tackle Spanish mackerel and bycatch king mackerel uh, trolling. Uh, it's pretty cool. We're using like 2,500 size spinning reels, um, medium fast action rods. Um, you want to tell a little bit of uh, some secrets that we're doing? <laughs> well, this morning the fish are not showing, so we're not jigging with metal like we usually are. So. We've got a Clark spoon out, which is metal. It's a, a trolling spoon. Well, usually we're jigging to these fish, but they're not showing, but the fish are in the top 10 foot of the water column. So we're using a small daisy chain, Spanish daisy chain. We're picking up kings on that. We're also picking up kings on a mackerel tree rig with a Clark spoon behind it. Oh, there you go. There you go. You could, I couldn't have done that better. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. You take that one. <laughs> that fish was on. Go, go matter. I'm good. Best part about it, these fish they hit, they hit like, the, the hits are ferocious. That's what's really the best part in my opinion. Spanish. Oh, oh nice. double header. <laughs> room for one more up here. Nah, we're good. Take your time, Mara. Yeah, that's a king. But I'll let, do your thing first, Mara. You got way more. A lot of fun on this sort of tackle. Tackle spinning gear kings. It's cool stuff. Oh, that's a nice one, man. Hang on. Oh, there he goes. There's that, there's that run we keep talking about. It's a nicer one. Ching. Nice. Double king. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. That's nice. This one's got some. Yeah, 
Uh-oh, you got one just hit right here. This one ain't even stopping. Here you go. Doubles. Doubles, baby. Mmm. Seen color yet? It looks pretty good. Well, we're done with meat, so we're gonna put this one back, but... Oh. That's a nice one. Yeah. Catch a couple more of these and we'll, we'll move on, man. I'll let you enjoy this way you can. Man. <laughs> Plenty of Spanish kings. Uh, it's good. Uh, we're going to do a little bottom fishing now, see what happens. Uh, got some crabs, maybe sheep's head. We'll see. Yeah. It's kind of just the, the winged side of the, the day. <laughs> so we'll see. It should be good. Oh, it's big. I thought that would be good. For the, uh, I, got, I put some traps down usually in the freezer or whatever. Yeah. Or if you put them right in the creek near you over there. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. Oh, South Carolina, man, that is magic down there, buddy. You can... Take your time dropping on this one. Make sure you're straight up yeah. and down. Be vertical. Oh, really? Yeah, this one's going to be. Dragging I, yeah. All right. Don't drag right here. Take your crank off if you got it. Big sheep. Big sheep. Yeah, I think so. Get my guess. I didn't get a good look at him yet. Big sheepy. Nice. Look at that. That's nice. Solid one. Just under citation, probably. Yeah, just under. Pick him up. Let's get a picture. Yeah. Pretty decent day, actually. We got a bunch of king Spanish, and we just rounded it out with one nice slob, slob sheep's head right there. So, not too bad. So, here we go. So, here, we're going to take these breasts, you know, these C cup size uh, <laughs> mushrooms, and we're gonna scrape the inside out. That's you gotta take this stuff out. You don't want that when you're grilling it. See, that's what you're gonna want. You see that? Everything all removed. So what we're gonna do with these real simple is that we're just gonna grill them and then just some garlic and oil and salt and pepper on top because these things are pretty flavorful by themselves. Even though they're Franken mushrooms. These are not even real mushrooms. Portobello mushrooms are actually the regular white and brown mushrooms you buy that are genetically modified so that they grow big like this. So Dang. I remember that. But, you know, it's done through horticulture, not through some mad scientist gene splicing at a laboratory. Oh, look at that. What do we got in there? Look at that. See, these here now we're gonna do roasted peppers. Mm. Now, we're gonna brown it a little bit more than that. So we're gonna char the whole outside of these. And then after we char them, I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to get the skins off nice and easy. See like that? That's yeah. you want to get that char there. And this is what you want. You want these nice and charred on the outside. And then we're gonna take that bag. All right, this is the magic trick. This is the only bag that works, the Harris Teeter bag. Just pop these in there. You take that bag, put them in there. Oh, it's, it's not like that smell. You know? Can you smell that? Can you smell that in there? Smell that? Smell that. Now you take this and you just seal this bag. You just fold it over a few times. Just like that. You make it like a little, little lunch box. A little lunch bag. Now, these are the, these are the grilled caps. So you can get a little bit, they can go a little longer. We're gonna put it on this side of the grill. This aqua side of the grill seems to be hotter. There's an old trick to tell how to figure out your grill. Like if you get a new grill, what you do is Take your grill, turn it on, and then take white bread, toast, and lay it out across the grill and let it stay for a little bit. Then turn the grill off and then flip them over and it'll tell you where the hot spots are. That's another trick. Pro tip. Yeah, then I just use your hand. 
Later we're gonna be cooking and I, I happened to come down here and I finally did it. I'm finally here with Eli, right? I came here to visit. My son is uh, graduating combat school in the Marines, so I'm gonna go see him, but I did a stop over here to see, to see uh, Eli. And uh, so I rented a boat over here that I'm sleeping in. Um, old Fat Girl is the name of it. And we're gonna be cooking in there. We're gonna be cooking out here in uh, lovely Carolina Beach. A lot of fun, man. I'm having a really good day with Kyle. I'm Kyle. <laughs> I'm having a good day with Eli uh, uh, and, and Rennie and getting those Max. This is going to be a good day. I got skunked on the, uh, I got skunked out on the uh, sheep's head. But uh, it wasn't much to go around. It was yeah. quality, not quantity. But Eli made up for it with that pig that he just picked up. It was a nice big pork chop. We're going to be doing that also. It's like, a, it's like shopping in here. All right, this is what we got here. We're gonna take this one, and then we're gonna grill, and stuff and grill the next largest ones. These we're gonna clean real fast, because these, these are just gonna get stuffed. All right, so we're just gonna open up the bottom. How are these little spines there? Take that off. We're gonna get in here. You want to take these gills out because these gills will make it really make a bitter taste. But you want to take them out and you want to keep the head intact. See here? You got a better angle there. Take the knife and just cut it right along the throat there. All right? pinch underneath here and you just pull it away from the head. Now, the belly. Those are the gonads. Now I'm gonna pull this out. I'd say there's something about Spanish mackerel. I, I, I grew up eating mackerel as a kid um, because, you know, my family, we didn't have a lot of money. And that was like the cheapest fish that you could buy. And it was, it was made real simple, just roasted in the oven, with garlic and oil. But I hated them because those are those Boston mackerels, I guess they call them. And um, they're real oily and nasty tasting. I mean, I appreciate them more now, but as a kid, I couldn't stand them. But then one day I was at a uh, sushi place and they they think, oh, we have we have Spanish mackerel. Like, I don't like mackerel. And the sushi chef is saying, you have to try this. This is Spanish mackerel. It's so much milder. Um, and it's actually a little bit firmer too. It's delicious. So I like Spanish mackerel now. And uh, I think that it's mild enough that we can turn around and, and do a, a simple grill with this. You know, lemon and olive oil, just like I used to have it when I was a kid. We do this hash marks here. The hash marks here could help it cook more evenly. You can just see how thin it is here and how thick it is there. What we're gonna do is now in this cavity, we're gonna stuff all kinds of herbs, and that's gonna steam into the meat and make it taste better. This one here, we're gonna make a nice ceviche with. This man has filleted a mackerel or two in his life. It's not my first rodeo. I wanna thank Billy Bo for giving me this knife for my birthday. It's actually really good. Nice and sharp. That's when you know you did it right. You see right through that, there's nothing left. Since we're doing ceviche, we're not gonna be using the fillets in full. So we're gonna cut this, these bones out instead of trying to pin through them. Skin it. Always found the mackerels. If you're too aggressive, you're doomed. Oh, nice cap. So I find it easier to cut from the top and go down. That bloodline out. Alright, ching, ching, cut. Ching, that. Very similar. What was the difference between this and the uh, Spanish? Because this still has the little dots on it. And the lateral line. line. The lateral line. That's it's straight. Friends, 
Oh, they're gonna be real happy in a second. Just watch. Let's see what this guy's eating. It's like some small rain bait. Yeah, small definitely. bait. Well, I don't know the bone's a little bit big. Maybe Spanish mackerel. Maybe. Maybe some juvenile stuff. Just pretty, just look at the look at the size of the scales. Oh dang. Yeah. Maybe okay. bunker. So maybe bunker. Yeah. I'm gonna actually cut this at a, at a sharp angle. The stakes. I hope I can get through the bone. So that this way we have you know nice size, nice decent sized stakes. Get through it, no problem. This about, I would say that's like an inch and a half, right? Look how beautiful that is. It's actually not that bad. It's not that gray. That no. I'm worried about. Bloodline is not that big. I have to rinse these off a little bit. So this way we can see how we like them better. On the skin fillet, we're staked. Good. I'm gonna take that bloodline out of there. Yeah, liver. Yeah, the, the, the whole liver there. Look at that pork chop right there. That thing's huge. I don't even. That's like a hubcap. Not even a pork chop. I don't even see pork chops that big. But uh, look at those teeth. That's missing one. Yeah, British teeth. We're gonna do something a little bit different with this. We're actually gonna cook this on the half shell. They call it. So we're leaving all these heavy scales on here, um, and we're gonna put that right on the grill and let it cook through the scales. Now, so I, I was telling you, coming in from here is gonna be regrettable. Really? That tough? You could try, but I'll show you the other way. Okay, let me try. Let me try my way and see if we get anywhere. No, I'll show you the other way out. <laughs> show me the other way anyway. But it doesn't look, it didn't look like it was that hard. You're talking about trying to cut this? You're going through here, there's a flap. See, look how- Oh, sorry, did I just cut you? <laughs> yeah, you're okay. That's what you were talking about. I yeah. thought you were talking yeah. about here. Oh, okay. See how soft it is there? That's magic right there. Boom, it gets right in there. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah, then you hit something right here. But in terms of the initial cut? Yeah, no, that's, that's, I, no, I never this cleaned one before like this. This big, you know, small ones. You do the same with the black drum too. Really? Look at that. It's all filled with like, all kinds of shells. Oh, sea urchin. Bang! It's all sea urchin in there. Sheep's head eating sea urchin. All of it, the whole thing is filled with sea urchin. There's the spleen. Yeah, this is all sea urchin. Cool. Awesome. We're roughing it today. We don't have a, a lime squeezer, so we're going with the fork. You gotta sit there and kind of jab it up a little bit, get the juice flowing. All right, so first dish we're gonna have is a Spanish mackerel ceviche. Uh, what is in there? Cilantro? We got cilantro, we got tomatoes, we have onions, a little bit of garlic, and we act, I, I like to throw a little shallot in there. I like the flavor of the shallots in there. So we got all that stuff in there. I might actually throw a little more cilantro because I like cilantro a lot. Cilantro's good. At home, sometimes what I'll do too is I'll even throw a little ginger in there. I know it's not traditional. I know people are gonna be sitting there like, ah, you don't put ginger in there. I do once in a while. I'll change it up. A little orange juice. Well, I never, I never mess with the orange juice in it before. It sounds good though, sweet. Yeah, it's a little nice. I usually use mango. Only, well, I'm gonna put half in there. We don't need the whole thing. Hipster mango is what I use. Hipster mango. <laughs> I don't know if I like the mango. Oh, it's good. Yeah. yeah, I love it. The grain is that way. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna cut these this way, so that we're cutting that connective tissue. There really is something really awesome about sitting here dockside, waves crashing, seagulls calling, calling out, and you know, and just making fresh seafood. It just, I mean, it's just awesome. I love it. This is like the best thing ever. I gotta put this 
so. Now, these peel this off. That's it. All this roasted stuff, just peel it off. You put this balsamic fish rub on here. I just toss a little bit on there. Sheep's head on the half shell. Right here. Okay, so got this going on there. I'm gonna put a little olive oil on top. It's not gonna be on the bottom, it's gonna be on top. I'm just gonna give it a little rub. You know, rub that in there. We'll help cook it. Yeah. I'll let that sit there. Let it sit for a little bit. Soak up those flavors. Okay, and now we're gonna season the kingfish. So this here we're gonna go with this Cajun seasoning. Go heavy on it. Yeah. wrapped around the skin and stuff too. Over here we have the uh, roasted peppers and everything all assembled. Garlic, Fresh oil, garlic, oil, oil, pepper. Mm. You want to stuff this up in there. Right up into the cavity, right up to the head. So we got thyme, cilantro, <laughs> and... Rosemary. A couple of slivers of garlic in there. Crisscross. Nice, nice Dang, taste. looks good. Do the same thing with this one. Put onion powder. Garlic powder. Generous. Yes, I like to be. I like to be generous. Salt. The wind is blowing so hard that <laughs> freak <Pretty good> everywhere. <laughs> Everything's got paprika, but the fish. night to these fish for a little bit. At least five minutes, right? Mm. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the that's the one that's gonna have pictures taken of it. That's Eat the good. fish is good for you. Uh, Very good. Um, these things the heart hearts are still beating when we were cutting them. Spanish mackerel ceviche is, for me is the best. The texture's great. Because yeah, the meat has the right texture to it. It's, it's uh, sometimes fish can be too tough or too soft. This is like right there in the middle. It's like, a, you know, it's got a good tooth to it and it's mild. It has a little bit of oil in it, which is great because there's so much citrus and so much acid in, in the uh, ceviche. It works out perfect. And it is, it is my favorite fish for ceviche. I put a little bit of this. It's olive oil, garlic, parsley. I've actually never eaten kingfish cooked. I've only had it in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a dip. Really? Yeah, I never had it like cooked. Right. cooked. So this is kingfish. Um, it was good. I don't know why it's got such a bad reputation. For me, anyway. I never liked it. <laughs> but yeah, um, it. You know what it does? It reminds me of bluefish. Does it? it oh, I hate bluefish. Let's <laughs> turn that camera around. I'm but, not a bluefish person. Right, so he that. said the word bluefish. That's like my it's least. Got the same texture. Oh. Let's see. What's the face look like? If you like a fishy tasting fish, this is the one for you. It's not bad, but I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to my 
certain flavors coming out of my fish. Lots of salt, aluminum, lots yeah. of jerk fit, jerk seasoning, lots of, you know, that kind of stuff. People that love a fish heavy flavor, they'll like this. That's what it is. Look how good that Oh yeah, it's nice and moist in the middle. I'll tell you right now, it tastes nothing like porgy. Well, that's real good. Yep, as you expected. Absolutely great. This and is that half shell routine too, it's like, it's nice because it comes in its own plate. So you can either open it up and take everything out or just eat around it. And I'm missing my fork over here. So, again, a little bit of goodness. Put that in there. Olive oil is very good for you. Mm, that's nice. Yep. Yeah. Man, man. It's always a good fish. Yeah, when you cook it, it gets a little bit softer. Um, but the flavor is really good. Better than the King Mac? Mmm. A hundred times better. It doesn't even taste anything like it. Interesting. Mm. Alright, let me give this, little, give, this, give this a little slurp. That is one gorgeous looking grilled fish. Dress it up so you don't can't taste the fish, right? That's what all the naysayers say. It enhances the taste of the fish. It doesn't mask the taste of the fish. These are mild herbs. This is not fried. Really, really good. It's the perfect balance of a, of a fish with oil, but not being overpowered, with a good texture too, on top of that. It hits all those sweet spots. I like it way better than the, the King Mackerel. I like catching the King Mackerel. They're fun as hell. Mm -hmm. But, but if you could just trade those in for... In terms for of what us. I like to eat, this is like... I could eat, this is a, one of my favorite fish, for sure. In terms of table fare. Skin crisps, crisps up nicely after you get the lemon seeds out. Yeah. But yeah, that one's legit. Thanks again, as always. It's a Mario. Uh, glad to have had him come by and fish with me and do this. It's always special. You know, a lot of time goes into it on his part too, and I always appreciate it. And the result's always great. Um, so yeah, the sheep's head and the Spanish mackerel, both ceviche grilled whole like this, both came out really good. Um, the king mackerels for those fish lovers. It was my first time eating it cooked. I really liked it smoked in a dip before. I've had that a couple times. But cooked, eh, it's not really my thing. But, like I said, the experience of catching was a blast. A lot of fun, Spanish mackerel fun. Had a pretty good time. I caught tons of fish today, too. We did get toad fish that you don't know about. And we had so much fish that we decided not to cook that. Otherwise, I would have did toad fish for you guys today, too. There's gonna be uh, links in the video's descriptions, uh, everything from uh, Mario's restaurant, Rennie Clark's uh, guide service, all fishing gear used um, from bottom sweeper jigs to just king mackerel trolling, etc. So I'll try to fill in all those details. So I hope you enjoyed. That was fun. I always have a blast doing this. Good, good food, good fishing. Today was actually a pretty dang good day of fishing too. So it's a good time. So catch up with you guys soon. I hope you enjoyed. I know this was a long video.